Some camps get lucky and have one or two guys come in who are naturally talented and go on to become world champions. But you seem to make champion after champion after champion in every weight class. What has made you so successful at making champions? Guys, I always say that uh, to have a, a world champion at the school is not that hard. Uh, you get a guy that uh, is so talented and, and, uh, and he, he's so blessed by God and learning jiu-jitsu that you can put him to train at the wall that he's going to be good. You know, I got a good example like a Jacare, you know, Ronaldo Jacare. He's a great, great, great uh, fighter. He's so talented, you know, that uh, he has a great instructor, uh, Henrique Machado from uh, from Manaus. The great instructor. He put some good, good fighters there. But if Jacare would train with anybody else, he would still he'd be great, you know. Not Jacare, but B.J. Penn, you know. We see a lot of guys like that, you know. B.J. He learned from Half. Half is like one of the best teachers I know. And uh, he, he puts his basics really sharp. But it's, there's some kinds of guys that doesn't matter. They're going to train with whoever. They can train even with, the, you know, that guys that uh, they say they're black belts, but they're not, you know. They can train with these guys and they, they can be good, you know. They, they're always going to be good. They're going to be champions. But, you know, the, uh, I always say that the making a lot of champions, that's, that's, that's a real tough thing. Uh, the tough thing is to get a team that uh, has good results and a team that is always getting like a lot of like uh, 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 guys in the podium, you know, not just one guy. They just have one guy now. A lot of guys, you know, always have guys. Sometimes the guy who was a world champion this last year, this year he's not, but a new guy come, you know. And I was lucky enough to have these on my team, you know, like all my, all my students. I, I was blessed by God to have a lot of talented guys, but not just talented, but because I have like a lot of dedicated guys. I think dedication beats talented. I got like great, great, great students, really talented students, but also I got like a lot of dedicated ones and these are my favorites, you know. Uh, I always use this example, uh, Chiu Chico, Augusto Vieira, he's a, he's a black belt under me. He's, he, he's teaching out for Hensel, uh, Hensel Gracie in, uh, in New York. He's going kind of back and forth to Brazil. I got this guy, he was like a, a fat kid, you know, like a a kid who doesn't have, didn't have any coordination, he still couldn't ride a bike. For you to have an idea, he couldn't do uh, uh, jumping jacks. He, he couldn't do one push up. You know, he was the kid that go, everybody goes to the school and hit him in the head like that. So shut up, kid! You know, fat piece of shit. And uh, this kid showed up at the school, and I was a kid that I look at him and say, "This kid's not gonna be here for one month. It's gonna be tough." You know, unfortunately. But the kid stayed, learned. For like the first year, he was getting beat by everybody. He kid, the first class was either beating him already. And then, dedication, dedication, training, hard work. He's two times world champion now. He's the guy who gave like uh, Sergio Moraes the hardest time all the time. He's like one of the best right now. He, he was not world champion of black belt because of a detail. He will be, I'm sure. And uh, he was a guy that he's like, uh, you, you have BJ Penn here and you have him there. It's completely the opposite. B.J. Penn have all this talent, all these great things that, you know, he gets things fast and Chiu Chico wouldn't do even jumping jacks, you know? And uh, that's what I think that you really can tell that you're a good instructor when you make guys like that succeed, you know? Not uh, just, just him, but we have a lot of other examples. So uh, I have to thank God for the, you know, for the gift of, 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 and for the lucky to get such great students like I had before. When you began training in jiu-jitsu, how was it different back then compared to how it is now? Guys, when I began to train jiu-jitsu, uh, pretty much what the difference of the classes is that, uh, number one, the classes were a little longer. And because the classes were longer, there was like a lot of time for us to chat between trainings and stuff. So it was a little bit more like, uh, I would say, more relaxed a little bit, if I'd, if I'd say that. Um, but uh, we always had a lot of self-defense and valetudo, of course, yeah. Like, uh, I remember that uh, as we do today in the fundamentals program at the school, and sometimes uh, every week, at the first, every first week of my school in advance, you always do self-defense, you know, it's really important. That's, jiu-jitsu is self-defense, you know. Jiu-jitsu was created to make the weak beat the strong. So uh, it's something that I never, during my teaching, I never put behind. I, I do competition training, yes, I do a lot of them. But uh, I never put the self-defense aspect behind. You, you can ask all my students, they all know moves of self-defense and everything. 
So I think the combination of balance between two both is, is the most important thing. I still do that. I think the classes are like more dynamic nowadays, more sh shorter because everybody's like rush. You know, the, the sport grew so much. You have way more students than you used to have. You used to have a small group and the hardcore guys there, you know, training every day, you know, that, you know, that thing, that, that, that brotherhood of a, like a, a handful of guys only. And now the thing is kind of getting mainstream, so I think the, the, the difference is, be, is basically like that. But the, the technique, the core, the, the, the philosophy is still there, so I don't see a lot of difference now. There have been comments that Gracie Baja is not pure jiu-jitsu. What do you think that means, and why do you think they say this? Yeah, I didn't even know that, but uh, I heard there was like a big polemic about people saying that uh, Gracie Baja doesn't do the pure jiu-jitsu or the real jiu-jitsu or whatever. I think that's really funny, you know, because uh, Gracie Ba is, is the number one jiu-jitsu team in the world in results and producing champions, and uh, the system that he do in Gracie Baja is the system that uh, was taught to my master by uh, Master Elio, Master Carlos Gracie. So uh, everything that he do come from this route, from, from Master Carlos and Master Elio. Uh, what uh, makes Gracie Baja different, I think, is that Gracie Baja puts, like I said, uh, the emphasis on the, of course, on the, on the technical aspect uh, and the self-defense aspect of the art, which is the spirit of the art, but also uh, we give value to competition. You want to produce, uh, uh, produce uh, fighters and the competitors that are among the best in the world, you know? And uh, if you don't have competitors on this caliber, you know, I, I don't see why you, could, you, you can say that we don't have the pure jiu-jitsu if our guys are among, are among the best in the world, you know? Um, people say, oh, about all the rules, and about EBJJF, they're not realistic, not the best guy wins all the time. Eh, I agree, but, you know, look at our guys. You know, our guys submit everybody, you know? You see Roger submits everybody. Homer submits everybody. So how come, you know, they... they, they, they they say that, you know, that they're not the real jiu-jitsu. The real jiu-jitsu is submission. Real jiu-jitsu is like progressive jiu-jitsu that gets position first, great defense, and then submission. That's exactly what Gracie Baja does. So uh, I really don't understand, and I really, I really can't understand at all how people say that. I think it's maybe it was like a, a misunderstanding, I believe, or, or maybe, you know, somebody was... I don't know, maybe drunk all the time. I don't really don't know because it's something that sounds even kind of silly to say. Because I mean, how come? You know, it's like saying that uh, uh, Randy Couture is not good at wrestling. You know, I, I don't know. You know? <laughs>